Hello team two and welcome to Tuesday the 30th of June's learning. How are we nearly at the end of June? Craziness, craziness. Okay, get some reading done. So I would like you to read your questions, read your extract and then think about your sentence stems that you're going to use to answer your question. Pause me now. So which dragon do you think Aristar? Which dragon do you think is Aristar, sorry? And why do you think that? So, the mighty dragons were the fiercest in the world. They trained to fight the knights with giant flames that blazed and swirled. Young Aristar disliked the flames with sports as they shot by. She found it all too scary and preferred the cooling sky. So, which dragon do you think is Aristar? I think the purple and blue dragon in the corner is Aristar because she stood far away from everyone, looking very frightened and not breathing out fire like all the other dragons. Or stop. The other dragons look very menacing too. So read your questions, then read your extract, then think of your sentence stems that you can excuse me, that you can use to answer your question. Okay, now, what time of day is it? And why are Sagoral and Aristar sneaking away? One morning, while the knights were all in training for a fight, Sir Goral slipped away towards the woods and out of sight. And as the dragons roared and shot their flames into the air, it got much worse for Aristar, who kept out of the lair. So what time of day is it? So the, the time of day is the morning. How do you know that? Because it starts with one morning. And why are Sir Goral and Aristar sneaking away? Sir Goral and Aristar are sneaking away because... They don't like fighting, do they? So as Aristar's team are fighting with swords, uh, no, as Aristar's team are fighting with flames, and as Sir Goral's fighting with swords, they don't like it. Read your questions, read your extract, think of your sentence stems that you're going to use to answer your question. Pause me now. How do both characters feel when they first see each other? How do you know this and which words describe the dragon? So Goral skipped along until something stopped him in his tracks. Hello, is someone there? He called, unable to relax. So Goral saw a dragon with a blue and scaly snout. Don't hurt me, said the two of them together with a shout. Oh, I would never hurt you, they, res they respond both confused. The presence of a friendly foe had left them quite bemused. So how do both characters feel when they each see each other? Both characters feel frightened, don't they? They're unable to relax. They shout, don't hurt me. How do you know this? We've just talked about that. And which words describe the dragon? Which words describe the dragon? So we've got some adjectives. The words blue and scaly snout describe the dragon. Read your questions, read your extract, think of your sentence stems to answer your question. Pause me now. How does Sir Goral and Aristar feel about fighting? How do you know this? What are enemies? Why are Sir Goral and Aristar enemies? Don't worry, said Sir Goral. I'm just keeping out of the way, as fighting makes me nervous and they're practicing today. Me too, responded Aristar. I feel the flames too hot. I hate the fact that dragons have to breathe them such a lot. If only we weren't enemies, we wouldn't need to fight. And maybe if we worked together, things would be all right. So how does Sir Goral and Aristar feel about fighting? Sir Goral and Aristar do not like fighting. It makes them nervous. How do you know this? They both say, fighting makes me nervous. They're practicing today. Me too, responded Aristar. I find the flames too hot. Aristar hates that he has hot flames and Sir Goral hates that she has hot flames, sorry, and Sir Goral says it makes him nervous. Why are Sir Goral and Aristar enemies? Now you've got to do a lot of thinking about this because the answer isn't in the text, the answer is going to come from your ideas. So why are they enemies? Sir Goral and Aristar are enemies because that's what they're raised to be. They, their mummies and their daddies before them would have been enemies, so they are born and feel like they just should be enemies.
Lincoln has a toy car and a toy truck. The toy car is 12 centimetres long. The toy truck is 7 centimetres longer than the car. How long is the truck? And B, what is the total length of both toys together? Pause me now. Eva has a toy car and a toy truck. The toy car is seven centimetres long. The toy truck is seven centimetres longer than the car. How long is the toy truck? 19 centimetres. And what is the total length of both toys together? 31 centimetres. Mo measures his pencil at the start of year two, halfway through year two and at the end of year two. You can see A, B and C. Which picture, A, B or C, shows the pencil at the start of year two? Which one do you think is good showing you the very beginning of the year? And how do you know? And what is the difference between the longest and the shortest? So you have to figure out which pencil is the longest, which is the shortest, and find the difference. Pause me now. So you can see that C is from the start of the year. Why? Because it's the longest. When you start the year, you get given your pencil and it's super long. And slowly over time, as you use it and you sharpen it, it gets shorter. And the difference between the longest, which is C, which is 13 centimetres, and the shortest, which is B, which is four centimetres, is nine centimetres. Jack, Teddy and Aisha buy cars for Dora's birthday. Teddy's card is 12 centimetres high. Jack's card is half the length of Teddy's card. Aisha's card is three centimetres taller than Teddy's card. What is the height of Jack's card? Now remember, Jack's card is half the length of Teddy's. Teddy's card is 12 centimetres. What is the height of Aisha's card? Now remember, Aisha's card is three centimetres taller than Teddy's. And how tall is Teddy's card? It's 12 centimetres high. What is the difference in height between Jack's card and Aisha's card? So look at Jack's card, look at Aisha's card, and what is the difference between the two numbers? Pause me now. You can see the height of Jack's card, which is half the length of Teddy's card. Teddy's card is 12 centimetres, so Jack's card is 6 centimetres. What is the height of Aisha's card? So remember, Aisha's card is three centimetres taller. So three centimetres taller than 12 is 15. And what is the difference in height between Jack's card and Aisha's card? The difference between Jack's card, which is six centimetres, and Aisha's card, which is 15 centimetres, is nine centimetres. Kim is 87 centimetres tall and Juan is 78 centimetres tall. Kim is taller than Brett. Juan is shorter than Brett. Circle all the heights that Brett could be. So Kim is 87, Juan is 78. Kim is taller than Brett and Juan is shorter than Brett. Circle all the heights that Brett could be. Pause me now. The year two classroom is 13 centimetres long. The year three classroom is eight metres longer than the year two classroom. How long is the year three classroom? So the year two classroom is 13 and the year Three classroom is eight centimetres longer than the 13 centimetre class, the 13 metre class. So how long is the year three classroom? Pause me now. The year four classroom is three metres shorter than the year two and the three classroom put together. So how long is the year four classroom? So you've got two things to do there. You need to figure out what the year three and four classrooms together make. And then that will tell you how long long the two of those together is and then the year four classroom is three centimeters three i keep saying centimeters three meters shorter than that pause me now so you can see that brett could be 80 centimeters or 86 centimeters the year two classroom is 30 meters the year three classroom is eight so the year three classroom is 21 meters and the year four classroom which is three meters shorter than the year two and three classroom is 31 meters what kind of punctuation would you use to complete this sentence How did you catch the dragon what do i need to put at the end there do i need an exclamation mark a question mark or a full stop is it a command or a statement is it asking a question or is it exclaiming how did you catch the dragon you need a 
question. I'm asking you a question. How did you catch the dragon? So, clue number two, mouthy emojis. All the emojis have different reasons why they couldn't have stolen the sunglasses, but their reasons are missing some full stops or capital letters. Can you write out the corrected reasons? Sorry, can you write out the yeah, corrected reasons in the correct box to re reveal whether the emoji has its mouth open or closed? So let's see. So I would like you to, in your books, draw a column that says full stop, draw, draw yourself a table, one side that says full stop, the other side that says capital letter. Then I would like you to read the sentences to the left and see what is missing. So the first one, it wasn't me, I was in the shower. What are they missing in that sentence? There's two sentences there. What's missing? You can see there, we've got the I missing, and so we would need to write this sentence here. It wasn't me, full stop, capital letter for your I, I was in the shower. If any are missing a full stop, then you need to put them in this. And we need to see how many sentences go in the full stop side, how many go in the capital letter side. And the most common correction is needing to put full stops or needing to put capital letters. So the emoji's mouth is if it's full stops, if there's too many full stops you've had to correct, it's going to be open. If there's too many capital letters that you need to correct, correct, it's going to be closed. So pause me now to do that, guys. Pause me now. You can see. There were three bubbles that were missing full stops and there were five bubbles that were missing capital letters. So have a look at your corrections. Have a look at the sentences that you've got in the columns, which ones are correct and which ones are incorrect. So check your work now. Pause me now, please. So the most common correction is capital letters. Did you get them all? So if we've got capital letters, it said if there's more capital letters to correct, the mouth is closed. So if we have a look at all of the emojis that have closed mouth, and what's the other clue that we've got that they, what kind of ice cream do they like? They like chocolate ice cream. So closed mouth, and they like chocolate ice cream. So the first one we've got, sad emoji, his mouth is closed and he likes chocolate. Now laughing emoji's mouth is closed, but what kind of ice cream do they like? Vanilla. So that's not right. Happy. Mouth open or closed? Closed. And chocolate, so ooh, could be happy, could be sad, could be happy. Nervous, has an open mouth, although he likes chocolate, has an open mouth, so that's not it. Sleepy, has a closed mouth and likes chocolate, could be sleepy, could be sleepy. Silly, has an open mouth and likes strawberries, definitely not silly. Scared, has a closed mouth and likes chocolate, it could be scared. Good, has a closed mouth and likes chocolate. Have I been looking? I think I might have been looking in the eyes. I've been looking in the eyes. Oh, guys, let's go back to the beginning. Sorry. So sad, has clothes and chocolate, so it's sad. Happy, I was thinking, I was looking at happy and sleepy. I was thinking, they're not so <laughs> Happy, has an open mouth, so it's not happy. Sorry, laughing, has an open mouth, so it's not. Oh, close. Happy has a close, so it could be. I hope you're following along. Nervous has closed, so it could be nervous. Sleepy has an open mouth, so it can't be sleepy. Silly has an open mouth, so it can't be silly. Scared has an open mouth. Scared has an open mouth and it's chocolate, but it can't be. Good has a closed mouth and likes chocolate, so it could be good. Embarrassed has a closed mouth and likes, oh, but likes vanilla. It's not embarrassed, likes vanilla. Crying has an open mouth and likes chocolate. Okay, so you and Mrs. Statham, if you're in school or you and your grown ups, need to check me out here. That was more complicated than it should have been. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So I have got sad, happy, sleepy, nervous, and good. Am I missing any? If I am, email them to me, guys. Where do Sagoral and Aristar meet for the first time? Where do they meet? Where is it that they meet? If you're not sure, go back and have a look. Where is it that they meet? Sagoral and Aristar meet in the woods for the first time. 
and you use the words from the stories to describe Aristar. Remember to use new words, phrases and commas in a list to describe him. They were some of the skills we were working on last week, weren't they? So use the words here. Pick out the words that you think best describe Aristar. There are some in there that are perfect. There are some that are weird. Let me show you the one that I've done. Aristar is a scaly fellow with two big hairy thighs. He has two extra tall wings which peek over the top of his head. He has a giant blue body which has an extra dark patch right in the centre of his body. Aristar has two pointy horns which protrude on the top of his head. I've put his all the way through, haven't I? It's not a him. It's she. This is all done. So, Aristar is a fairly scaly gal she has two extra tall wings which peek over the top of her head she has a giant blue body which has an extra dark patch right in the center of her body aristar has two pointy horns which protrude on the top of her head all right guys Hi guys, the team in Brayton are doing an incredible job of keeping the community really tight. It's inspirational. They're amazing. So the Brayton Million have put together the idea of a time capsule. And so this is something that I've taken from their Facebook page. I don't know if you want to have a little look more in detail there, but they want stories, they want poems, they want photos of the things that you've been busy doing. Anything that you do, you can bring into school and we can use in school and you can take it to the Times capsule if you do anything electronically, which it sounds like they would like and we would like too. So it's two birds with one stone, isn't it? You can do things for them and things for us. So have a little read and get anything off that you've been busy doing. They want to see it as much as we do. One of the things that they talked about was that you could do a news report about your experience. And so here are a couple of ideas about you could any. Now, it doesn't need to just be on coronavirus. It can be on something that you did in the day at home. So it could be a newspaper on what you did during coronavirus and you could do a whole topic on it. Or it could be something really specific. Have you invented an amazing game that you and your brothers and sisters have played? There are no rules about this. You can create whatever you want to create. It also suggests a diary. So we've been busy writing diaries during this time. You might not, they might be personal. You might not want to use that or you might be happy to share, but you could write a diary piece and you could think back at some of the best times and the trickiest times, the in-between times, and you could have a little reflect back and write one piece about your time during lockdown. This is just taken from the Britain Millenn Millennium um, webpage. So these are all the different things that they're offering. So I'm sure you have, I'm sure you're more aware of it than me, but if you haven't had a look, go and check it out. They're doing some awesome things. This is a little competition for, not a competition, this is a little activity for pen pals. So this is the form that you can fill out on the website. And you've got lots of different options. One of them being that if you want to keep your address private, then that's your choice. And that you can give it to the Brit and Mille, Mille, I keep wanting to call them the Brit and Millennials, the Brit and Million, and they will exchange it for you. So if it's your... Um, address that you're unsure about then we can look around that so that looked like a really interesting exciting activity you could make a new friend during this and then we would like any of your memories so like the Brit and Million have asked for we would like for the your memories of the good the bad the everything in between of what you've been doing during lockdown so if you can provide us with a photo so when we're coming back into school we can all share these and it'll be something to talk about because we're all going to have had really different experiences so bring a f if you want to email photos that I can forward on into school if you want to do a little write-up there are no rules about this there are no rules about how you can display what it is that you've been busy do doing during lockdown but we'd love to hear and see it please guys so i've put a little here this time has been a big medley of ups and downs as we 
think about coming back to school, we'd like to create the little book of lockdown. Start to gather some photographs and begin to share ideas for us to discuss further in school. Why have you picked this memory and what happened? And then we've got a connected curriculum curriculum menu for you to have a little challenge and have a little look at. So I know we've had some fabulous maps of Britain come in. So when you get into the end of that and you've explored some of the Britain, I still want to millennium, millions, then you can come back to this. So that hopefully that should be enough to keep you busy. If you're still looking for more, get in touch and we'll find we'll find some more things for you to be busy with.